Welcome to this ANSYS Innovation course on multi-material inductors. In our previous videos, we show the design and simulation of a multi-material inductor under a specific DC current 10 amp. However, in most power applications, the load usually varies from time to time. Accordingly, the DC BIOS at the inductor also varies from time to time. Thus, the inductor dimension designed for 10 amp may not be suitable for changing DC BIOS. So what would be the best multi-material inductor design for a converter with changing load? Let's take a look at this graph. Inductance of an inductor usually drop with DC BIOS, but can have different slopes depending on the inductor design. If a converter works a lot at light load, which means the inductor works a lot at low DC BIOS, we'd like the LI curve to be steep, so the inductance at low DC BIOS is high, and that at high DC BIOS is low, but it's not that important. If the inductor works a lot at high DC BIOS, we'd like the curve to be more flat, so that the inductance does not drop too much at high BIOS. Therefore, we'd like to see how the variation in inductor design changes the LI curve, so we'll know what the best inductor design for the converter is. Now let's take a look of how to simulate and optimize LI curves for the multi-material inductor in ANSYS Maxwell. Open the simulation file we created in the last video. Let's make R1 and R2 variables in a multi-material design. R1 is the outer radius of the inner ring, ring 3. So double-click Create Cylinder on the Ring 3 tab. Change the radius to 1.15 mm plus T1, where T1 is the wall thickness of the inner ring. R2 is the outer radius of the middle ring. So follow the previous steps to change the radius on the Ring 2 to 1.15 mm plus T1 plus T2, where T2 is the wall thickness of the middle ring, ring 2. Now we have two dimension variables for the inductor core. Since we're going to sweep DC current to get the LI curves, we need to create another variable, IDC, for sweeping DC current. Go to Excitation, double-click the defined currents, and change the current value from 10 amp to IDC. Set the nominal value to 0 amp. Now let's add parametric analysis to sweep the three defined design variables. Right-click Optometrics, Add, Parametric. Under Sweep Definition tab, click Add, choose variable T1. Let's sweep T1 from 0.1 mm to 1 mm with a linear step size of 0.3 mm. Click Add. Then select T2 to sweep it from 0.8 mm to 1.7 mm with a linear step size of 0.3 mm. Finally, choose to sweep IDC from 0 amp to 20 amp with a linear step size of 5 amp. You can check the defined sweeping points for all variables under Table tab. Click OK. Validate and analyze the setup. Once the analysis is completed, to plot the LI curves, right-click Result, Create Magnetostatic Report, Rectangular Report. For Y-axis, under Category, choose L, and choose Matrix 1, L, Group 1, Group 1. For X-axis, use IDC. To plot LI curves under different T1 and T2, click Families. Make sure all values are included for both T1 and T2. Click New Report. We can see multiple LI curves under different T1 and T2 are plotted. Choose the LI curve that best suited the working condition of your converter. You can calculate the weighted average inductance for each curve based on the percentages of time of each DC BIOS on the inductor. To get the data, 
Right-click on the plot, choose Export to get the set of points. For example, if the inductor works at 5 amp DC current for 10% of the time, at 10 amp for 30% of the time, and at 20 amp for 60% of the time, then we can use the data to calculate the weighted average inductance and find the highest weighted average inductance is when T1 equals to 1 millimeter and T2 equals to 1.7 millimeter. So R1 and R2 for the multi-material inductor should be 2.15 millimeter and 3.85 millimeter, respectively. From this example, we can see that for changing DC bias, we cannot simply calculate R1 and R2 by Ampere's law but need Li plots under different conditions to extrapolate the best group of R1 and R2. By using Maxwell, we can quickly obtain plenty of Li plots for our use. So far, we have shown the design of a novel inductor using Maxwell. ANSYS Maxwell can help us quickly predict inductance for an unconventional multi-material inductor design and quickly optimize the design by concurrently sweeping multiple variables, which is difficult to be done by hand calculations, and allow users to import custom material properties to ensure more accurate results, which is very important to this kind of inductor design. Besides, we showed one example in this course but depending on your applications, the R in, R out, height, number of turns, or even the inductor shape can all be different. The number of material can also be more than three to get even higher inductance density, which can all be quickly evaluated by Maxwell simulation. Thank you for watching this course. For more information on ANSYS Maxwell, or any of our simulation tool. Visit our ANSYS learning channel, ansys.com forward slash courses today.